Welcome, my viewers and my listeners of the program Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. I'm your presenter, Pastor Florence Miner, all the way from Minnesota, USA. I am so, so much grateful this day, being the 15th day of the month of November. We have come to the half of the month. We are on the mid-month of November, which is always known the Thanksgiving month. And for me and for my family, it's a double Thanksgiving I did not even know about the Thanksgiving in America, but I want to thank God that one of our family members stepped in the front of the United States of America on the month of November. So it's very, very significant. Today's, oh God, message. <laughs> it's very interesting. And this is the title. When age is not an issue, when God wants to use you. When age is not an issue, when God wants to use you. My words of reference will be from the book of Joshua, chapter 14, verses 6 to verse 11. And I'll be reading, actually I'm going to read up to verse 12 from New King James Fashion in Jesus' name. And um, in natural fact, this message uh, has been lingering in me and it was provoked after I went to KCUC and Leverett David Stewart was preaching and the title of the message was Against All Odds. And so when age is not an issue, when God wants to use you, I hope you can be able to get that very well. And I know God will bless us. First, we are going to start with a word of prayer, but I would like you to hold on to your Bible. I wish you could have the hard copy instead of the electronic, but nevertheless, whichever you'll be using. And let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for who you are and what you mean in my life. I want to thank you for what you mean in the life of my viewer and my listener. As they listen to this message, may it resonate with their lives, dear Father, and the reasons they could be giving, not only age, even when our status or our the necessary is a Hedrons, may we know that Lord God Almighty, it calls for those people who knows who you who you are. Thank you, King of Kings. As I minister, may you use me as a vessel. I pray that I may decrease as you increase. I lift you high up. As you have said that when you are lifted up, you shall draw men to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'll be reading from New King James Fashion. It says, Then the children of Judah and Judah means praise, came to, came to Joshua in Gigel, and Caleb, the son of Je Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the son of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh, Banea. I was forty years Old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. I don't want to forget, but I would like you to highlight. I was 40 years old. Carab was 40 years old when Moses sent him and other spies to go and spy the land that God had promised them. I go to verse 8. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart, the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. I want you to highlight there, verse 10, part B. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am, this day, 85 years old, hallelujah, as yet I, as yet I am as strong this day as on that day day that Moses sent me just as my strength was then so now is my strength for what both for going out and coming in now therefore 
Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them as the Lord said. And we read verse 13. And Joshua blessed him uh, and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of uh, Jephthah, as, as, as an inheritance. Amen. Please, if you could also highlight verse 10. Uh, as, you know, and now, let me say, okay, as the, the second part. As he said this 45 years ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses. Hallelujah. Mo, I want you to notice that when God used Moses against all odds because he was born when the children were being killed, but God in his own ways against all, all those things, he made it away, he made it possible, but he had to use the wisdom of the mother. Now, he was 40 years when he was sent with other spies, with other readers. And here comes along the way, Moses has died, and he's now 85 after 48, 45 years. Hallelujah. When age is not an issue, when God wants to use you, my brother and my sister, maybe also this is because I celebrated my 59th birthday on November 10th, that is five days ago. That I honestly I can attest, like what the way Caleb said, and I feel emotional about this. That I feel like I'm not 59. I feel yet so strong to serve the Lord. I feel so passionate to serve the Lord. Where are you? When age is not an issue, you are as young as you are, but age is not an issue because God called Jeremiah when he was young and he was giving an excuse and saying, I am just young. I do not know how to speak. And God told him, I'm going to put my word in your mouth. God is about to put a word in your mouth so that you can speak to the weary and encourage them. So that you can be able to mentor that girl who is giving up. So that you can be able to be a father figure to that boy who is struggling. My God and my Savior, it is my prayer that you'll know that age is not an issue when God wants to use you. Neither are your originality an issue. Neither is your status, your education, academic status an issue. Neither is your being uh, educated or not, whether you are black or white, whether you are from Africa or from Asia, oh, it doesn't matter. As long as you are there and you have the ears and you can hear what God is telling you. When it is not an issue and God wants to use you. Yes. There are many times we say, I am old. I am not able to speak. Let me tell you, when God wants you to speak, he's going to put a word in, his, in your mouth. He will put a language that will be like the tongues of fire that, so that you can be able to communicate. I want to tell you some things I also share. And later on, I listen to these messages and I feel, God, God is this me who made, who shared these messages? Because they come to me new. They come to me in a deeper revelation and in a newer revelation. You are there. You could be young. You could be old. You could be middle class. But age is not an issue when God wants to use you. Maybe you are saying, I do not know how to speak for sure. As long as you can be able to say, give me this mountain like Caleb said. As long as you can be able to say, Jesus loves you. As long as you say that Jesus died for me, you are able to speak. God is not looking for professional speakers. He's not looking for those people who can be able to attract millions and millions. I have always said in my life and as I serve God, that my policy, my protocol, if I could only impact one person, that is good enough. Not that I don't like numbers, but they don't bother me. Because it is God who can add the numbers. Remember in the time of Gideon, God said, these 300 are too many for me. These are too many for me. He went down to 300. Let me tell you, your age, your academic achievement, your ethnicity, you are being able to speak very smoothly, like a public speaker. It's not the issue. It is your heart, the connection you have with the Father. 
Here, Caleb was sent by Moses. He was not sent alone. Most of the time, when God is speaking, he's speaking to us when we are in a multitude, but he's speaking to you alone. Caleb was sent with other men who were readers. They were not just mere men. And they went to spy the Lord and for sure they saw the Lord was good. Not only did they see it was good. They saw it was good and they came with the evidence of the goodness of the Lord and the productivity of the land. They came with the samples of the, fr of the fruits, the grapes, and all those kind of things. And they came and said, oh, we went there, and the land is good. It flows with milk and honey. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. And the cities there are fortified. But the people who live there, they are huge. They are like giants. And in our eyes, we saw ourselves like grasshoppers. My brother and my sister. Oh, let me talk to our immigrant brethren. You are here. You, maybe you are in the UK. Maybe you are in the US like I am. Maybe you are in India. Maybe you are in Canada. And if you, there was a time that you used to cry to God. That if I go to that place, I will serve God. And here you came and you realize, my God, they say I have an accent. Let me tell you. Your accent is your identification, DNA, and uniqueness. Did you hear that? Don't worry. Your accent identifies who you are because you are unique. It's a high time we realize that God is taking us on a journey. And as he takes us on a journey, Isaiah chapter 40 is being fulfilled. That they that wait upon the Lord shall, be, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. This is what happened to Caleb. He was sent when he was 40 years. I want to thank God. That I came here when I was slightly over 40. And I want to thank God for the years that I've lived here. God blessed us <laughs> with the last born son at my age, when I was age 40. And so you were there. Age is not an issue when God wants to bless you. Remember Sarah. But I want you to focus mostly on serving the Lord. And you're telling me I don't have a church. What do you consider to be a church? As the man of God has been reminding us, JJ, Dr. JJ, of Priesthood Fellowship Church in Kenya, church is not an essential we have come to realize because if crowds can be opened many hours and churches only around two hours, what are you telling us? You don't need to have a building so that you can serve God. You can serve God when you are seated in your house because the technology is here. And you tell me, I don't know about technology. I am, I am with you there. Let me tell you, when God sees the passion and the desire you have, he will make a way. He will make a way. Can I tell you something? Oh, <laughs> For me, to go on YouTube, to have a YouTube channel. I did not even know how to put it. Even now, I don't know how to do it. But God had to minister to somebody. And that somebody had to talk to me. And I heard it. God bless you, Pastor Damaris. And he, he had to tell me, Florence, God is using you. You can reach many people. And when the pastor came here, God bless you, Pastor Mkubwa. I celebrate your moment, continue. Oh, you are in first, your account in heaven is also being recognized. You are in this. Even now, when I am downloading songs, you might realize some of them the way they got, I do it. I just take a step of faith. I want to encourage you, I want to, uh, to challenge you, and I want to inspire you. Irrespective of your age, it doesn't matter. Irrespective of your identity, it doesn't matter. God is not looking for perfect people. God is not looking for educated people. He is looking for affordable and willing and humble vessels. And one of the things I like about Kerem is that 
He knew who he was. Knowing who we are is what makes the difference as we serve and live for the Lord. And so this day, being the mid-month of November, being Monday evening, I want to encourage you. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, no matter how educated you are, no matter how young you are, God is after you, following him holy, and not just going with the multitude. If Caleb had gone with the multitude when he went to, when they went to spy the land, he would have also felt like he was a grasshopper. But he realized he did not follow the multitude. Oh, he did not believe the multitude that they were like grasshoppers. He knew he was a chosen person ordained before birth. My brother, my sister, my fellow immigrant, my fellow women, you've been saying, my husband cannot allow you. It is not your husband that holds the key for the kingdom. It is God. You, husband, you have been saying, my children, my wife, it is not your wife, it's not your children, it's not your family, it's not your job, it's not your employer who holds your kingdom, you, the keys of the kingdom, it is God. Maybe you are telling me, I may not be able to do the way you do it like you, Pastor Florence, for sure, no, I believe it. You can't do like myself, because we are unique, we are all gifted differently. And that's why I like when I'm ministered to by the songs. The servant of God, sorry. The servant of God, Shiro GP. There's a song she has sung. You can never be like me and I can never be like you. Be who you are. But remember, God is calling you. Against our odds, as the message was. You see, now I went. After I left my home church, I went to KCOC. I they had to cost me some, you know, distance to drive. The roads were not very friendly driving, but I counted the cost anyway. And I heard the message and it inspired me. I've been meditating on it. Every time I want to get out of it, the Spirit of God touches the reminder against all odds. Because many people have been bowed by their odds. What they think is odd. Their age is odd. I'm 59 and I'm proud about it. I don't feel like 59 when it comes to serving the Lord. You are there. You are 16. You are not serving the Lord. I am. You could be young, but I want to thank God for Pastor Aiden Ogoro who is preaching at age 12 and I'm connected with him. Yes. You could be there and you're wondering what is she talking about? I am talking about you getting you getting off that cocoon, that box of the reasons. Because you know, for every person the enemy have enough reasons for everything we want to do for the Lord. And so I want to encourage you, get out of all those reasoning that you've been having and trust the Lord to use you, trust the Lord to take your life and, 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 and take control over it so that wherever he said you will go, whatever he tells you, you'll be able to say, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've given you a word. May your Holy Spirit continue to water it in the hearts of your people, that they, it may bear for the fruit that will encourage them, for the glory and honor of thy name, so that they can be able to celebrate every moment with joy despite what. Even as I was blessed by that song that was sung by the kids in KCOC, that praise him, praise him, praise him, who no matter what, I thank you. And I pray for my few and my listener, that no matter what could be going on in their life, they shall praise you, they shall purpose us to serve you and to trust in you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. You know what? It all starts with a personal identity. You are there. You have never identified yourself as a believer to trust the Lord in a personal way. The way Caleb was able to say, I am after 45 years, I, I feel as strong as before and I feel strong for war. I feel strong to preach the word. I, still I feel strong to intercede for the widows. I feel strong to intercede for the pastors like Florence. Oh, and the Lord will bless you. And above all, your name will be written in the book of life. You'll be transformed from a sinner to a saint in Jesus' name. Do you want to say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus? I come before you. I repent of my sins. Write my name in the book of life and give me a desire to grow spiritually in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you've been transformed. The old is gone and the new has come. Now start walking in the newness of life and the Lord will bless you. Two things very important. Testimony. Testifying of what God has done for you. And also connecting yourself to a congregation of believers who believe in the word of God from Genesis to Revelation for your spiritual growth because together we grow. God bless you. Remember every moment you are breathing in and breathing out. It's a reason for you to praise and thank the Lord. 
God bless you. I love you and God loves you the most. Remember to subscribe to my channel of Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. Amen and amen.